What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we have a revisiting of the RX 6900 XT mining performance. We will be just going over the new algorithms and coins that are available for you to mine on this. If you would like the hash rates for the standard coins that we usually cover in the past, like Ravencoin or Ethereum, please check out my original review of the GPU. Since this is a follow-up, we don't get any of the flashy B-roll or anything along those lines. If you need specifications like the amount of cores and the core clock, etc., definitely go check out the original review. Today we're going to be taking a look at essentially four different coins that are mineable now and their associated algorithms plus profitability on them. We will briefly discuss, of course, how Ethereum is still the most profitable on it. However, here are some other options that you can take a look at as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the 6900 XT hash rates revisited right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs quickly while earning up to 8% cash back. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue revenue on your investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Welcome back. So, First things first, let's go ahead and discuss the RX 6900 XT model. This is going to be the Sapphire version, and it has the triple fan with two 8-pin power adapters to it, and it is running on my test bench, which has a 5950X currently in it. We'll be modifying that as we review additional Ryzen CPUs for mining, if we can find profitable CPU coins to mine outside of, you know, the ones that are pumping too much difficulty into the network, i.e. Raptorium. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the numbers. That's what you guys are here for. It should be a pretty quick video. I don't have a ton to cover. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is Cortex. So Cortex is essentially a newer coin out there. We have talked about mining it before. And what we have here in settings is pretty much leaving the max frequency alone and just overclocking the memory. This is what we did across the board for all of these coins. I did attempt to turn down the frequency percentage on pretty much all of them, actually all of the ones that we're gonna to discuss today, and it did impact hash rate on all of them. So just keep that in mind. While it was mining this particular algorithm, it hit 2302 megahertz on the core and 2138 megahertz on the memory. Now I had basically kind of the silent mode going on for the fan speed. So the fan or the temperatures are a little higher at 78C on the core and 87C on the junction. Not too worrisome though. We still are not thermal throttling at all. So that resulted in 3.6 graphs a second at 262 watts. And we'll go over profitability here in just a little bit. The next one that we took a look at was Ergo. Now Ergo may be changing, of course, its profitability here soon because of the re-emissions contract, but that won't change the hash rate, just the profitability that we talk about in a little bit. Now, while mining Ergo, the clock speed on the core did go up to 2,521, and the power consumption was 227 watts with the clock speed on the memory at 2,138 megahertz, which seems to be pretty consistent across the board. Now, this algorithm is auto leakos and these settings resulted in 120 mega hash a second at 227 watts you can significantly reduce the wattage by turning down the core frequency it will impact of course your mining 
hash rate and usually down to about 113 mega hash a second in this particular case can get you all the way down to about 170 watts. The next coin that we took a look at was Flux. Now Flux is making waves. It's staying at the top of the charts in what to mine. It has a new partnership with NVIDIA, but that doesn't mean that you can't find profitable GPUs from AMD to mine it with, specifically the RX 6000 series. And while the 6900 XT doesn't perform near as well as the RTX 3080s and up, it does perform admirably to a certain extent and is something you should take a look at when you are cal calculating profitability for this particular GPU. Now the clock speed only went up to 2217 megahertz. If it could go up a little bit more, which I tried to do by turning the max frequency percentage rate up, I would assume that we could get even better hash out of it. Unfortunately, this just seems to be where the clock speed with this particular algorithm gets stuck, which is the Zell hash algorithm. The memory was clocked at 2140 megahertz and the power consumption was 263 watts. This resulted in a hash rate of 67 hash per second. Uh, and in this particular case, or solutions a second, in what to mine, it's calculated as hash a second, basically the same thing though. Uh, a thing to note though, like it's pretty, pretty low compared to something like the 3080 Ti. Even the 2080 Ti is going to net you 95 solutions a second. So this isn't really the optimal card for flux. It just may be something you want to consider. Now the final one is a coin I've been playing with quite frequently, trying to get it figured out. It's taking a little bit longer because there were issues with the LOL miner release to support this coin. There were issues with the pools getting hacked to support this coin. So we are working on how to mine it, all that sort of stuff. Just stay cautious around it. But we went ahead and tested Toncoin. And here's where the RX 6900 XT shines. And it's pretty dang significant. So on Toncoin, we saw a clock speed of up to 2,196 megahertz. The power consumption was 263 watts and the VRAM was up to 1,340 megahertz in this particular case. So it wasn't like worried that much about VRAM or anything like that. And even with this, we ended up with 4.7 giga hash a second. So this one's a little difficult. Let me try to put it into perspective for you as far as uh, clock rates go, etc. So if we're talking about Toncoin, what I am noticing uh, traditionally is everything's within the giga hash range. If you're looking at a 6600, it's one giga hash. If you're looking at a 6600 XT, you're looking at about 1.5 giga hash, 1.3 to 1.5 giga hash, depending on the core overclock there. I'm definitely looking forward to testing the 6500 XT. The 6000 series is performing very, very well. But that doesn't mean that the RTX 3000 series isn't performing as well either because if you look at the 3090, you are looking at essentially the same 4.7 to 5 giga hash a second on the 3090 as well. So there's some benefits here across the board for high core clock and this definitely results in basically what looks like the most profitable coin for the 6900 XT as it sits right now. And if we take a look at what to mine, we have to use a different calculator for Toncoin. So we have queued in here, Cortex, Autolico, Zellhash, and Kapow. Flux comes in first on what to mine at $2.18 a day after power consumption. Cortex comes in at $1.67 a day after power consumption. Ergo comes in at $1.18 a day after power consumption. That one's also going to change depending on what happens with EIP 0027 involving the re-emissions contract. We will keep you updated on where that's at, of course, so stay tuned to the channel for that. Ravencoin, $1.17 a day after power, uh, and that's just left over from the old one. I should clarify that that was tested originally in the original video. 
Let's go ahead and look at Ton though here, which is going to be 4.7 giga hash a second. We do need to plug in the power of the 263 to calculate this out for profitability. 10 cents a kilowatt hour like we have on what to mine. And this is the dark coin algorithm. It's a very interesting algorithm. We're gonna be talking about how uh, this consensus mechanism works in a different video. So stay tuned for that as well. But for the 24 hours, you're going to get about two ton essentially, which is going to come out to $5.80 before power and $5.22 after power. That's on a single GPU. That's $5 a day. That $5 a day that you're getting on ton on the 6900 XT means that essentially you're making the same amount on a 6900 XT as you are on an RTX 3090 mining Ethereum at this point. Is it viable? Is it viable to go ahead and mine ton? Can you liquidate easy? And the answer is actually yes, the more I play with it. There's a couple caveats, but we're going to be doing a how to mine ton video and covering it for you guys because it is a little bit more difficult than or at least more convoluted than others but they do have a bridge to ethereum they do have a bridge to bsc which is the binance smart chain meaning liquidation is actually very easy liquidating on those networks is actually incredibly easy uh, on par basically almost on par with flux now flux has more interoperability, if I can ever say that word properly, <laughs> with its parallel assets. I think they're up to five different networks, while Ton only has two different networks. But keep in mind, apparently the coin only launched really, or relaunched a couple months ago. So at this point, I think that it's worth taking a look at. I definitely wanted to provide you guys with the updated numbers for the R. X6900 XT. It's been one of my favorite GPUs uh, from a gaming perspective. And now it's looking like, you know, there's some mining stuff we can do with it. Mine's on the Ton network right now. We moved all of our 6000 series over there. We're going to build up enough to go ahead and cover, you know, basically profitability and moving it around for you guys. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you're notified when videos go live on the channel, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, check out more crypto content up here, or go ahead and subscribe, and subscribe. Either way,